So, so far we've, we've only opened files which are in the current folder, which is the, the one where the .py file is located, where the examples are located. Um, but actually you can open any file in principle. Uh, and to do that, you need to import the OS module, the operating system module. Okay, the, the terminology that it uses is very much like Unix, if you're familiar with it. So it doesn't use the idea of folders, it uses um, directories. Uh, so directory or DIR, dir, uh, is, is used for a folder. And the address of a file is often referred to as a path. So a typical path to uh, documents on a PC would be C for the drive, then users, then the name of the user, and then documents. Okay, so you that's that's a path. That whole uh, set of text from C C colon users Chris documents is a path to uh, a folder on my PC. Okay, how do we use this OS? Um, well, we can use things like OS .curdir. That gets the current directory, so the one that the program is operating in at the moment, which would be usually the one the program starts off in, or parent dir directory the the folder that's above, the folder that contains the current directory. Uh, and you can use methods like um, listdir, and that will then list, uh, return a list of files in the name of a uh, directory. Or you can check to see whether a particular path is a directory. Okay, that's very useful to know whether, when you're looking at a file, is this a directory that, or a folder that you can then drop down into and look at the files in there, or is it a a file that you can open and read. So, for example, uh, documents, user, users Chris documents would be returned true because that's a that's a folder, whereas users Chris documents lorem.txt would return false because that's just a text file. Okay, uh, uh, and now if we want to explore the file system a little bit further, we're going to need to know about something called recursion. So, if we um, if we want to drill down into the file system to look at what's there. What we often need to do is, is something like this. You don't, it doesn't have to be like this, but this is a typical way. So here's a function called index, and it's given a, the name of a folder, a name of a directory, dear name. Uh, and then we can use uh, os.listdir to list all the files in that folder. And that, they're stored in a list of file names. And then we can loop over those file names and we can create a, a new path, which would be the, the name of the folder plus uh, the file name plus the, the separator. Typically, this is um, on, on a PC that's backslash, on a Mac, it'll be a forward slash. Um, and if you're using a backslash, you have to use an escape character, which means you have to put a backslash in front of it. So the, the reason this double backslash is there is just to, to uh, uh, that that will then get represented as a backslash, but uh, it's just because the backslash is used as an escape character in uh, Python and many other programming languages as it happens. Okay, so that will give us, for each file, this will give us the, the complete path, so the complete location of that file in the folder in this dir. And then what do we need to do? If that path, if that file is a folder itself, then we need to go and use this index function to look at that folder. Okay, so here's the so we're listing all the files in the in the directory. We loop over them all. We construct a path for each of the files. The path being the whole thing. So the file name is just the name of the file. The path is the whole thing from the C colon and so on. Obviously different on a Mac, but the principle is still the same. It's it's a list. It's a uh, location from uh, for the whole computer, starting at the top uh, on a PC, it's usually the C drive. Uh, and then if the file is actually a directory, so if it's is dear, if, if that's true, then we can then index that directory. And this this um, this index function then calls itself. That's the idea of recursion. So you can see there's a function here called index, and this index function calls the index function. And this idea is known as recursion. Uh, and let's have a look at an example of that. So if we use this OS and recursion, we can list all um, the files in a directory and all of its subdirectories. Sub and this allows the user to uh, input their, oh yes, 
sorry, this example allows the user to input their choice of directory, which can either be the current directory, or it could be the parent directory, or it could be any other directory. Okay, so let's have a look at the program. So I can, the program will ask the user, me, uh, what, what path I want to look at, which directory I want to look at, and I can either just put nothing, which will be the current directory, or I can put dot dot for the parent, or I can put some other directory if I want to. So here's the program. Okay. Um, let's, uh, yeah, there's the program. There's the index and list. This is slightly different to the one I showed you a little bit earlier. Uh, this goes through all the files in a folder or in a directory. Uh, if it's a directory, then it calls the, this function calls itself and drops down into that directory and lists all the files there. If it's not a directory, and if the path ends with a .py, so this is listing all the .python files, then it prints the uh, the path of that file, but it takes off the root path length. So it, the root path length is just the, the length of the the start of that, um, that folder name. So just to make the, the files shorter by name. So here we are. Um, the root path is we ask the user what the they where they want to start. That's the root path. Uh, so this is the main program that calls this index and list. We ask them what where they want to start. They could start in the current directory, or they could start in the parent directory, or they could start somewhere else. Um, and then if that's a directory, so we check it's a directory when they give us a a, um, a path. If it's a directory. Then we use this index and list function, uh, and we just trim off the front, the length of that initial path when we print out the files. So if I let me just demonstrate that running, that's clearer. So here it is, file lister. So if I run this and put nothing in, I'll get the current directory, and there you see it's listing all the files. Or the Python files, because it, remember, it only prints out the file if it ends with .py. Okay. If I run it again, and I, I put in dot dot for the parent directory, okay, it's going to list out loads and loads of files because it's going up to uh, my uh, programming foundations folder, and it lists all these all these folders. So it lists every single one of them by dropping down into them and listing the files. And you can see there it's listing all the files. And I've, I've trimmed off the, the thing that says C users Chris desktop. So all I'm listing is the, the local name of the folder, which might be LO4 functions, uh, LO6 loops, and then the name of the file. Obviously, I could do that um, for other types of file. So just change that to TXT. There's many fewer text files, so if I put dot dot, oops, dot dot, you can see there's only two, in fact, the, the two files that we've seen in this particular lecture. Okay, let's change that back again. So this lists all the Python files in a particular folder which the user can choose. Uh, and there's, there's it running in the current directory. Just a few notes. Uh, as I said, it, it only lists the Python files, but that's easy to change. Um, you could just get rid. You could you could just get rid of this elif and change it to else, and then it lists. It, then it will print out the name of any file file it finds, whether it's whatever the, the the extension is, whether it's Python file or a text file or something else. Um, <coughs> and as I said, the main program passes in the length of the the initial path, the starting directory, so that when we print them out, it doesn't, it trims that off. So it prints out L01 introduction, O1 hello world, rather than C colon users, Chris documents, and so on. So it's, it's just trimming off that initial, the, the name of the initial um, directory, the root directory. Um, and just one other thing to notice about that. There's only one try and accept block at the top level of this program. Okay, so I haven't put the try and accept block. I could put the try and accept block in this in this function, but I haven't. What I've done is I've put it at the top. Okay, and any error that gets found while we're going down into the files will then get thrown out and uh, end up 
in this accept block. And don't forget, this could be, we could be using this to explore the entire file system. So it could be 10, 20 folders deep, possibly, um, which means that we only need to, we can, we can handle these exceptions very nicely with very little code. So anything goes wrong with that, it jumps out to the accept statement at the top, even if it's recursed down over and over and again into the uh, index and list function. Okay, so exceptions are, uh, you can use them to control all, all kinds of things. And if you want something very specific in a very specific part of your program, then that's, you know, you can do that, but you can put in a big exception, you know, a big exception. You can put a, a, a simple exception at the top of your program in the main part of the program, and that will catch anything where it goes wrong. So with minimal code, uh, you just sometimes want to be a bit more specific if you want to give the user, the more specific you can be, the more specific an error message you can give the user. Okay, let's stop the lecture there, the video there, and then we'll move on to the next uh, in a second.